All right. Um, glad y'all could make it. Uh, well, you've heard the uh, judge's rulings on the motions. Uh, judge Pohl, as you can tell, is uh, uh, very deliberate and has a sense of humor. And uh, uh, I think his uh, rulings are pretty clear. Uh, the big thing for us right now is he has uh, ordered discovery to be done. Uh, there are numerous investigations being done by the uh, U.S. government and various agencies. Uh, we uh, very much need those statements uh, that were made by witnesses during the course of those investigations uh, so that we can continue our preparation for trial and come up with a list of witnesses who will testify at trial. Uh, there will be quite a few civilian witnesses. Uh, one problem that you can tell we've already articulated is currently the trial is scheduled to be held uh, in Iraq. And uh, while I enjoy traveling to Iraq, most civilian witnesses will not. Uh, and as you may know, uh, U.S. courts lack the authority to order United States citizens to leave the continental United States. Uh, therefore, if the trial remains in Iraq, uh, I cannot compel any citizen to travel to Iraq for trial. Uh, service members who can be ordered to active duty or who are on active duty can be ordered there and virtually no one else. Uh, there are a number of witnesses who now are out of the Army, no longer subject to being recalled, uh, that we would not be able to get. Uh, the alternative normally would be to depose those witnesses, uh, perhaps on video camera, back in the United States. But as you can imagine, that would be less effective uh, than having a witness testify live before the jury. And we will oppose that. Uh, I anticipate that on October 21st, we will file another motion uh, to move the trial to the continental United States. Uh, as a backup, uh, we would not mind trying the case in Germany, although again, I can't compel witnesses to travel here either. But there are a great class of witnesses who would not mind traveling here who would object to traveling to Iraq and going into a war zone. Uh, plus the logistics of getting in and out of Iraq via Kuwait uh, is quite difficult. Many of you know that uh, better than I do. Uh, I've only been there once, and you've been there several times in, in some cases, I recognize. So uh, that's a possible problem. Um, uh, also, we intend to file a motion to dismiss all charges for command influence. Uh, we touched on that today, that um, the President of the United States, as the Commander-in-Chief of all U.S. forces, uh, the Secretary of Defense, and a number of high-ranking uniform personnel including the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of all U.S. forces, uh, has made numerous public comments uh, implying that they believe that Specialist Grainer and the others are guilty of a crime and deserve severe punishment. Uh, it's inconceivable that any possible juror, uh, any member of our court, has not heard that and may have that in the back of his or her mind when they're deliberating this case. So we anticipate fleshing that out in the form of a motion to dismiss the charges, and we intend to file that in time for the uh, 21 October session. Um, that, those are all the prepared remarks I have. Are there any questions? Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Abrams. Um, how does the point where you judge, at least at this point, allow the computer and all the images on it? We really don't. It, it's, it's almost uh, a waste of time to litigate that issue. We felt it was important because it is a legal matter. But uh, because of the great number of uh, images that have been um, copied onto CDs by other individuals, uh, even if the judge had granted that motion, uh, it may well be that the defense, I mean, the government would have had uh, the same images from other sources uh, for which we would have no standing to object. Uh, other persons may have had CDs. So uh, we don't really see that as a setback. Uh, we raised the issue as a legal matter. Uh, we litigated it. Uh, we will appeal that if there were to be a conviction in this case, but uh, we had not planned our defense around winning that motion, uh, but we thought it was well raised and, and had to be raised. Any other do questions? You, do you yes, sir. alter your strategy now at all based on the judge's ruling? Uh, no, uh, as I just said, uh, we were hopeful he would grant the motion, but even if he had, there are so many other copies of those images. Uh, available that were obtained through other individuals, uh, such as uh, Darby himself, uh, we would have been contesting those images anyway. 
Uh, and, 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 and our defense has always been that the actions taken at Abu Ghraib prison were lawful. And even if the actions were unlawful, the MPs who acted there were under lawful orders or what they thought were lawful orders to take those actions. And that's unchanged. How could it be lawful? Well, let me answer that by another question. If you order a young soldier to fire on a car driven by a woman and there are children in the car knowing that you will kill them, is that ever a lawful order? Of course it is. In the opening stages of Operation Iraqi Freedom, uh, numerous times U.S. soldiers and Marines had to fire on automobiles driving toward a checkpoint that did not stop in a timely fashion. And it appeared they were driven by non-combatants with children in the car and no visible weapons in the car. We had to do that, and it's a lawful order to order those men to do that because of the fact that some of those cars carried devices, uh, explosive devices. So things that may look illegal to you and me, if you put it in context, it may not be illegal. Stripping prisoners is never extraordinary. I don't know about uh, uh, every country, but I know that in the United States, uh, from experience handling uh, cases from prisons, uh, every day in American prisons, uh, inmates are ordered stripped. Uh, there are psychological reasons, there are physical reasons. Uh, at a glance, you can tell the person is not armed. Um, there has been, there will be testimony at the trial of environmental manipulation. That is a technique used in interrogations, and uh, one way of doing that is to uh, deprive a person of clothing during cold weather to make them colder uh, and, and to make them more complacent uh, and more, li more likely to comply with orders to talk. Uh, that is a, an authorized technique during certain interrogations that may have been involved here. Um, you have to put it in context. There may be something wrong and there may not be. Under the context, as the MPs understood it at Abu Ghraib, there was nothing wrong with it. And it was a daily routine uh, among dozens of prisoners every day at Abu Ghraib. Any other questions? How do you draw the line between, okay, these were ordered, and you're defending your client, okay, these were ordered, and they were ordered, and every soldier knows that he does not have to, he or she does not have to obey an unlawful order. Uh, I mean, does it come to a point where the individual has responsibility to say, no, this is wrong and I'm not going to do it? That's correct. And keep in mind, an American serviceman or servicewoman has an obligation to follow all orders. But if an order appears to be unlawful, they have an obligation to question the order, uh, to ask for a clarification, and then if they are certain in their mind that the order is unlawful, they have an obligation to disobey that order, only under that circumstance. Here, Specialist Grainer and the other MPs uh, were given orders that they thought were questionable. They did question the orders. They went to commissioned officers and senior enlisted men within their chain of command and consistently were told that they were to follow those orders that they were lawful. Under those circumstances, the MPs felt compelled to follow those orders, and I think they were right. Absolutely. We expect to have at trial the uh, testimony of senior enlisted and commissioned officers to whom these uh, military policemen did complain, and I expect them to come in and tell the truth. Your client made the statement, uh, or it's alleged that he made the statement of being a scapegoat. Do you think there's any truth in that? I don't think there's anyone here who has followed this case who doubts that. Keep in mind that starting with the preferral of charges in, the ca in this case, the United States government has portrayed this as being seven rogue MPs operating on their own with no direction, no supervision. That is not true. Now we've had, because of the good work of the media, there are actual photographs that have surfaced showing military intelligence and civilian contract intelligence personnel present orchestrating, setting up scenes for interrogation. Uh, now it would be laughable for someone to conclude that these seven MPs acted with no direction from above. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Let me clarify that. Yeah, let me clarify that. There was a CID investigation into allegations that some CID agents may have been involved in some kind of abuse. I don't know that it had anything to do with the charges in this case, but similar type of things involving CID agents. I'm not sure what the allegations are. We just know that there is such an investigation 
Uh, but I don't, I don't presume for a moment to think that it is involved in the same charged offenses as in this case. It may be allegations of abuse at a different time. Uh, I don't know. Did you mention in court that including CID guys that testified today? Or did I miss it? 